It's that time again. It is the Final Fantasy Platinum series. I'm really happy with the consistency I have right now, though I know it will change as we head to the later titles of the series. But I have just completed Final Fantasy 4 out of 6 in the Pixel Remaster, and I just want to talk about it again. Get involved in the comments. It has been a great ride so far. Let's continue on. And with that all being said, what is up, guys? Genesis7 here. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel. I've got you covered with timestamps in the description down below. So if you want to skip to a certain section, you can do that. If you want to speed up the video, you can do that also. Whatever floats your boat, all I ask is for you to support the channel by hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel if you like the content, and you know, hit the notification bell so you're notified of the content and leave a comment in the comment section below. So with that all out of the way, Final Fantasy 4. It has been done, it has been complete, and I've got the Platinum Trophy, and we're going to talk all about it. But we need to rewind and talk about when I first played Final Fantasy 4. And I have a little thing here called, if you can see that, Final Fantasy Anthology. That was my first experience with Final Fantasy 4. I got this the same year I got Final Fantasy 10. So obviously I played Final Fantasy X first, but then I was intrigued about the past. It says on the back, learn from history. And I certainly did that because my first was seven. So going back to that was a treat. I know that the PlayStation 1 version isn't the best version, but it was my first version. It had the CGI cutscene, I believe, in this as well. I'm not too sure yet. Featuring all new CG cinematic sequences exclusive to this anthology edition. So yeah, that was my first time. I didn't play the Game Boy Advance version, but I did play the PSP version, and I played After Years and Interlude. And I think, like Final Fantasy 1 and 2 Anniversary Editions, that is the best looking and the most kind of impressive port of Final Fantasy 4. But the most accessible, of course, is the Pixel Remaster, and that's where we are here and now. And my experience with Final Fantasy IV, you know, going back to the 8-bit, uh, the 16-bit, I should say, games after playing and starting with the 3D games was a trip. I had to get used to it. So let's talk about the game. The evolution of Final Fantasy continues. This was a Final Fantasy for very many firsts. We had the ATB system, which continued for more and more titles after 4. We had... For the first time, unique characters in the respect of like Final Fantasy 1, we had the job system, so we had the choice. Final Fantasy 2, we had the leveling system, so we had the choice how to level our characters and teach them what they needed to be taught, whatever we wanted to do. Final Fantasy 3, we turned to the job system. Final Fantasy 4 had characters that kind of had preset jobs. They came with abilities already. We had Cecil as the Dark Knight changing into the paladin we had yang as the monk we had kane as the dragoon rosa as the white mage etc etc ridia as the summoner so they were all set jobs that we knew from obviously games we played prior to four but they were not changeable these are what they came with it for the exception of cecil who later became a paladin spoilers but we're going to be talking about all sorts of things in this video so i'm sure you don't mind and one more thing that final fantasy 4 brought to the table was taking five party members to battle which i believe has not been done since like four has always been the staple sometimes we've gone down to three but five has never really been seen again unless you count final fantasy 14 where you're taking up to 24 characters into a dungeon but that is a video in itself. So, Final Fantasy IV, the story, I don't think is the shining star of Final Fantasy IV. I think the story is okay, but I don't think it is the best Final Fantasy story. I think where Final Fantasy IV shines is its cast of characters. It's the first time we had such a expansive range of characters that kind of, I don't know, there's, there's something about the Final Fantasy IV story when it comes to the characters that I don't really like, and that's the kind of gotcha moments with the characters. Like, without spoiling it too much, events happen to characters, and you think, oh, oh man, okay, I see what you're doing there. And then, later in the game, they reappear, and it's like, ah, you, th you thought, you th nah, you're wrong. 
I, I'm not a big fan of that trope because it got used way too many times. It was acceptable for one or two characters, but for a lot of the characters, it was not a great thing to experience. But the cast of characters itself and the fact that we have all these characters with backstories that we kind of visit, some briefer than others, it's nice to have. Final Fantasy II tried that with their main four characters, and it was very limited in what it could do. But Final Fantasy IV takes that formula and throws it straight at us and it works and it's a great step in the direction for characters i think the characters are stronger than the story but that is something that you guys can discuss with me in the comment section down below something i want to touch on that's relating to the story and the characters is something they really did quite uniquely in this game in respects to the battles i'm going to kind of dub them battle cutscenes, but essentially get forced into a battle of which where we can't really do anything and the one there are a few that we can do things but it's predetermined but there are other battles that kind of play out the story further and i thought this was a great use of the battle formula where you think you go into a battle but it's just expanding on the story scene that's happening in the battle so you can imagine it we all know about the spoony bod i'll use that as an example you are continuing that story between edward and teller through the battle and it works really well and it's something that's done frequently throughout final fantasy 4 to great effect and i really like that obviously with a new final fantasy we have a new world to explore and final fantasy 4 definitely reinvents the formula we have our world map but we have places to travel much like final fantasy 3 where you kind of start off on the floating continent and then you kind of go out to the expansive world and you can go underwater you know final fantasy 4 tweaks that just a little bit we have our full world map off the get-go and we can visit the underground and then we can go all the way up to the moon as well so it's three kind of world maps to explore these worlds are curated to expand and kind of enhance the story and its characters and it does that really well and these worlds in final fantasy 4 have been a pleasure to explore so moving on to combat now i want to talk about combat because again final fantasy 4 bought the atb system to play for final fantasy games going forward and it definitely is a welcome change essentially the atb system stands for active time battle and instead of taking certain turns that are always the same you start from your top and you go all the way down to your fourth everyone's speed stat i believe is configured into this bar that raises in the battle and the same applies to enemies as well and when you have your bar full you can attack and sometimes some characters will be faster than others and might get two attacks in what you would call a turn this can work both ways for enemies as well and that's why we have an option to go from active to wait active just keeps those bars rolling for the enemies all the time even when we're going through menus to pick our attacks wait gives you the opportunity when you're selecting your attack the enemies aren't going to do anything so if you want to take a moment to kind of strategize the battle which personally i am a wait active time battler you can do that and it definitely works and helps out considerably but if you are wanting to just kind of let things happen naturally and kind of battle under pressure you want to go with the active option now i don't know if it's just me but going from final fantasy 3 to final fantasy 4 not talking about boosts or anything like that we'll go into that when we talk about the pixel remaster but i did find final fantasy 4 to be considerably harder when it comes to battles than final fantasy 3. i don't know if this is just the way it works because sometimes i'll be doing quite nicely traversing the world map doing the random battles and i'll go into a dungeon and then i'm just absolutely on the edge like i'm hitting critical hp levels i'm having to use cures i'm having to really think about who i've got in my party and how to use them effectively and it's really keeping me engaged and that's kind of like a double-edged sword in my book because it's like sometimes you're going to get wiped out and it can get frustrating but sometimes it really kind of challenges you and i found myself in that sometimes like thinking oh man i'm under leveled but then going out to the world map in the area that have led up to this dungeon i've done fine so i do find final fantasy 4 considerably harder so you guys will have to chime in and let me know am i alone on that am i just not that great at final fantasy 4 or is it quite challenging compared to the previous final fantasy I just mentioned going to dungeons and I want to speak about dungeons just for a second because we've had a wild road so far with dungeons through these pixel remasters revisiting these games. We've had empty rooms, we've had taking five steps and going into a random battle but I think Final Fantasy 4 hit its stride 
I think the dungeon layouts were alright, they weren't overly annoying. There wasn't a plethora of empty rooms like Final Fantasy 2. There wasn't an insane amount of random battles. I think they hit the mix of it just right. Though there are some empty rooms in Final Fantasy 4, it is not anywhere compared to Final Fantasy 2. And I think, again, Final Fantasy 4 hit its stride with the dungeons. And there's some memorable ones in there as well, which we'll go over when we talk about the trophies. And again, going back to the unique characters having set jobs, obviously you need to really think about who is in your party as you go into battle. Make sure when you're going with Rosa that she's doing her job as the white mage, making sure that as you're with Rydia that she's got the summons that she needs to kind of give you that edge because I must admit, Bahamut definitely helped me out in Final Fantasy IV in more ways than none. Obviously, Cecil, I felt going from Dark Knight to Paladin made him just a little bit weaker. I really like just using his darkness attack on the early stages of the game, but when he goes to Paladin, he gets some white magic and he has the ability to cover enemies. Apart from that, he is not that useful and you really need to consider all these facts as you go in. Sometimes you have Teller join the party and he can be considerably useful with his higher magic stats and helping you get through the earlier dungeons. So it's always thinking about your team arrangement because you can't change Cecil to be a red mage or you can't change Rosa to be a black mage. You really need to kind of look what party arrangement you have and make sure it works going into those dungeons and make sure they've got that good synergy. And I think it works to its own credit. Even though we have lost the option that we've had in the previous three games to cater the characters to do certain things to what we want, I think it did a good job of catering us to what it's offering and I've definitely got to give that some high praise because it was a lot of fun even though I didn't really select what my character's role was in the game. And I think that's everything I want to touch on when we're talking about Final Fantasy as a whole. As always, if there's something I've missed, let me know in the comment section below, and I'm more than happy to talk about it with you. Now let's move on to the Pixel Remaster changes. Again, without sounding like a broken record, some of these features are going to be repeats of what we've mentioned, but I'm going to try and twist and turn it into how it affects Final Fantasy IV. So the usual ones we have is the music player. Final Fantasy IV has a great soundtrack. I actually preferred using the SNES soundtrack sometimes, but again, the remastered soundtrack is pretty kick-ass, so I was really having a hard time deciding what soundtrack to use, but you can listen to it at your own leisure with the Final Fantasy IV Pixel Remaster. We have the art gallery, and with this being a bigger game, a vast majority of characters, a bigger world to explore, there is much art to have a look at. And then again, we have the greatest feature in the Pixel Remaster is the bestiary with three worlds to explore. We have three sets of maps that we can kind of go over to see if we've got any missing enemies. There are a few missables to consider, but we'll touch on a lot later. But the fact that we have the best area in Final Fantasy IV, exploring that world map with that magnifying glass, having a look at enemy statistics, testing our skills against these enemies and their kind of arrangements, the way they appear it with other enemies is great. And I'll always talk about it even when we go over five and six. It is a great system. System, and they really hit home with the bestiary system and the pixel remasters last but not least we have the boosts and again this just kind of follows the simple tradition that we've had with uh, most of the pixel remasters so far we have the option to turn random encounters on and off which you can also do by clicking in the right analog stick we have the option to increase the gill from times one to times two to times four or decrease it to 0 0.5 or zero. And again, with the same with the experience starts off at one, you can increase it to times two to times four, decrease it to 0 0.5 or no experience whatsoever. Though I don't advise that because again, Final Fantasy IV is a little bit on the difficult side. And I know, speaking about difficulty, I'm aware that the SNES version, especially the Japanese version, was considerably harder. I believe when it came over to the West, it was easier. I think they even called it easy mode or easy version or something like that. And I know that we're getting it easier with the Pixel remasters 
But um, again, the options are there if you want to make it a little bit more difficult for yourselves. How can I forget about the map system? I always seem to forget about this when I'm rolling through the pixel remaster changes and additions. But again, the map system definitely helps out in Final Fantasy IV so you can get in all those chests and hidden items. Right, the trophies. And again, Final Fantasy IV follows a similar trend to what Final Fantasies 1 through 3 did, but with a few extras that relate to kind of side quests of Final Fantasy 4. So we have our bestiary, we have our chests, we have our money, and we have our story beats, as well as collecting all the summons, all the hidden summons, getting the adamantite armor. All of these are pretty easy to do as long as you have the prerequisites. There are a few things that we need to note when it comes to drop rates because this is one of the first Final Fantasy games where we are relying on drop rates. But we'll talk about that when we go with them individually. A few things you want to note that there are missable locations, but there's only three. And they are the Tower of Zot, Tower of Babel, and the Giant of Babel. These are just one-time visit locations, so just be sure when you're in these locations that you're clearing out the bestiary and you're clearing out those chests just by going over to the map and making sure you've checked off all those chests. So not much to worry about in terms of missables. Again, we go into these drop rates because one of the trophies require you to get these summons that are dropped from generic enemies. So we have the bomb, the cockatrice, we have the mind flayer and the goblin. Now I got pretty lucky with these drop rates. I got the cockatrice literally at the beginning of the game along with the goblin. I had to do a little bit of grinding with the mind flayer. I do advise you to go back to the magnetic cavern once you defeated the boss there so you don't have to worry about the equipment you're taking into there when you're grinding. And make sure you stock up on some sirens because that will instantly get you two mind flayers to go against. And then it's just a good luck from there. And then last but not least, the bomb took me a little bit longer than the Mind Flayer, surprisingly. But there is a certain section of the moon where you can grind against balloons and dark grenades for the chance of them to drop the bomb summon. But the drop you'll probably be working towards the most is the pink tail. This is an item required to get the adamante armor and you need to go against a group of flan princesses. The only place to go against these is the lead up to the final dungeon in a certain room and they are a rare encounter. But if you have the sirens, use sirens and they'll spawn. So again, it'll be good luck from there. There. This took me a little longer, but not as long as some of the stories I've heard from others. So overall, the trophy list for me was pretty obtainable. If you have any other questions about trophies, please let me know in the comment section below. But a good trophy list nonetheless. And that leads us to the end of our Final Fantasy Platinum Series video on Final Fantasy IV. Final Fantasy IV was a treat to go back to. I will sound like a broken record when I say I go back to these games. Maybe it's nostalgia, maybe it's just reminiscing, but it was a treat to play it through the Pixel Remaster. It's definitely one of my favorites, but we know that some of the things that were brought to the table to Final Fantasy IV will get improved upon in two games time, and we are very excited to hit that one. But next on the list is Final Fantasy V, and this is a personal favorite of mine. I'm very excited to go into this one might take a little bit longer because there are certain games that are dropping that I want to play around this time but be sure to hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell so you are notified when the Final Fantasy 5 Platinum series goes live thank you for your time and I'll catch you on the flip side